Hello everyone, my name is Thomas and today I'm introducing to you the BMS Racing JS3. So what is the JS3? It's our latest racing frame and it's a frame that's really focused on lightweight and also being able to carry HD0. As far as some of the successes we've had, I've taken it to TQ in first place at Australian Drone Nationals, second place at the Multi-GP International Open, first place in TQ at the New Zealand Open, it's competed really well in the qualifying and racing for the Japan Drone League, which is a bit more of an endurance league. And as far as all state level comps are concerned, it's managed TQ in first place. I'm pretty sure at every single one it's competed in. A new thing to BMS Racing, we also have team pilots now. And so under the piloting of Dim Sim FPV at the 2024 Esho Down Under, he managed to score himself a TQ and first place. Super, super proud of him. We also had McDaddy FPV and Huey FPV from the Defense Force qualify for the 2024 Military International Drone Racing Tournament in London. As far as build rate with everything minus battery, you're looking at around 240 to 270 grams. It's obviously very dependent on how you configure your parts. So with an analog build, I generally tend to find myself around the mid 240s to the low 250s. With HD0, a 248 gram build is possible, but to be honest, you're really pushing the limits and you probably will find yourself with a bit of an unreliable setup. I found that 250 to 260 gram range seems to be the most common sort of weight range. That's with diversity antennas, a really reliable and powerful powertrain, and obviously a solid video link. But that's sort of the weight range that you can expect the frame to be in once it's all built. When it comes to chasing grams, packaging is really important. And as you can see, the JS3 is quite a different configuration from what we've produced in the past. We're now rocking a top plate setup. The main reason for that, HD0 VTXs are a square. Flight controllers are a square. ESCs are a square. In general, an approximately boxy shape tends to be the best way to package these components. So it gives us a good balance of lightweight, of durability, and also a little bit of aero. We have taken a slight top speed hit on the JS2. This is with MCK V2s, but everything else identical from 217 kilometers an hour to around 208. That being said, you do end up saving yourself about 20 grams on the build, which does accumulate in all of the corners and your acceleration points. We also have the stack bolts running through the arms. This is for two factors. Number one, we've got full cross compatibility with the bottom plate and the arms with the JS2. If you have a JS2 and you also want to have a Tiger in the fleet, you can actually use the JS2 arms on the Tiger. You'll have a little bit more motor to motor, a little bit more cleaner air, but also a little bit more weight, but then you've got that cross compatibility. The other benefit of having that X configuration is that we have the stack bolts running straight through the arms. This is a little bit of a trade-off in arm swapping time in that you have to take the two bolts out and then swap the arm, pop them back in and tension the little nut. The flip side, this is a frame that's built around chasing grams and saving weight. We're making less components do more work and also creating a really stiff structure. Obviously for myself, coming from the JS1 and JS2, which were both frames that rocked a really sleek canopy that improved performance, going to a top plate frame meant that there was going to be that compromise in top speed by a little bit. We tried to recover some of that with a canopy. We actually found almost a negligible top speed gain, but an efficiency increase on your sort of average size national and international courses. Obviously, this is an optional extra. We have the team in Japan that also rocks these frames. And from my good friends, Atsuki and Kenti FPV, who are top pilots in Japan, they actually found that because they came from a top plate frame, they were able to fly without the canopy more efficiently, especially when it comes to race conditions. In the case of myself and other people that have come from the JS1, JS2, the canopy provides a very familiar feeling with how you work the pitch. And so for us, we tend to find more efficiency. That being said, there's always a benefit and trade-off and it's literally four bolts to change and decide how you wanna configure your setup. The other little benefit of the canopy, especially if you print it with our settings, is it acts like a little bit of an airbag, almost like the cushions in the JS1 and JS2 canopy. And what that means is, especially with a top plate frame, where if you KO it directly in the middle, they'll tend to cave in and then hit your internal electronics. You sort of have that little bit of cushioning, that little bit of extra energy dispersion that can save top plates and therefore save your internal equipment in a head-on collision. It's one of those things that's obviously a little bit of a trade-off with weight, but you can always experiment with this and see what works best for you. So there you go, that is a quick rundown on the BMS Racing JS3. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think of this in the comments, whether you're already an owner of the platform or whether you're someone else that's from the outside looking in or interested. 
Whatever your ideas are, thoughts, comments, there's obviously a lot of different approaches to drone racing frames. Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you got to say. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. We're going to be going live here on the cone in less than five. Nice All right, they're away clean. This could be the final race of the day. Looks like we've got Thomas out in front, IQ Zero just behind. Juicy Flick not behind that, and Heaty coming up in fourth. It is identical videos to Thomas and IQ Zero. The gap is 0.3 of a second. 0.4 of a second back to Juicy, and 0.5 of a second back to Heaty. It is Nick and Nick. Oh, it's lights out for Juicy Flick. That is not ideal. Oh, a big gap. A massive gap on him. He is pushing. Not on you anymore. All right. A little bit of a bump here. To finish his third lap, this could be it, team. That is Nick and Nick for all time. He is celebrating hard.